Hello, everyone. My name is Alex. I work at JetBrains. I do libraries for Kotlin. Last year, I was talking about Kotlin XRPC library. This year, I'm talking about the Kotlin SDK that we wrote to support model context protocol from Anthropic. Now, before we start talking about Kotlin, and the Kotlin part would be the easier part of the talk, we need to talk about model context protocol in general, what it is, understand its use cases, and I mean, what the, all the fuss is about. So the thing is, we will do a little live demo to demonstrate why MCP is such a thing right now. This is Google Maps. This is the place that we are in right now. And say you're chatting with an AI bot, and you want some specific information, the information that just cannot be in the LLM's data set. So for example, here, the information that is not in the LLM's data set is um, what are the exact coordinates for the address where we are right now in. And uh, if I would ask a simple chatbot about this, it will probably say some gibberish and uh, non-understandable uh, stuff. And it probably would be wrong. But MCP is the thing that allows AI bots to uh, get the actual information from the real world, to make them AI agents. So for example, here, I can open Cloud Desktop, and I can ask it, OK, so take all of the cafes that are here near our venue, choose the one with the highest rating in the distance of two kilometers, and tell me how long it will take me to go there by foot. This is a quite complex request, and it requires a lot of specifics, the thing, the information that was not in the data set of all of them. And you can see here, it made some requests. Maps geocode, maps search places, place details, place directions, and it's still going, it's still going, and it's trying to understand how to perform my request better. So it found this coffee, coffee's cafe. Rating is quite good. Here's the address, here's the walking distance, and the walking time, just as we asked. But I mean, that's kind of impressive, right? We get some exact information that was not in the data set. But also, it's about gathering information. It's about providing information to you as a user, it, what usually LLMs do, what we are all used to. Um, Creating something new is kind of a different thing, yes? So, for example, here is a GitHub. This is a repository for my other project. And what I want to do now is I want to say, let's modify something in this repository. And I will use not Cloud Desktop, but I will use Raycast. This is a utility for Mac OS systems. And I will use GitHub MCP server now to do this thing. Now, let's perform the request. As you see, I ask it to create a branch in this repository, name it MCP demo branch, and change the readme content. It proposes me some changes, uh, asks if it is safe to run them, I will approve them. It will try to run them, it will fail for some reason. It will try to understand why it's failed. It will hopefully come up with a new command. Yes, it found that it was missing one of the parameters. And now I will approve the new request, and as you can see, here was the new branch created, and uh, also we can go to this branch, uh, MCP. Uh, let's reload it. We'll go to this branch, MCP, demo, and we'll see that the contents of the readme file were changed to some random YouTube link, and it was done just now. Now, that is much more impressive. We can make AI agents do stuff for us, which is complex. Now. Let's go back to the theory on this. Now, this was MCP. Now, how does it work, I mean, in general? What is the internals here? So let's see you have a server. This is your regular server, and uh, it hosts Google Maps API. Now, API would look like something like this. We have an endpoint for Geocode. We say that by giving us an address, we will return some coordinates for this, and we describe the form in which they would be returned. So in this case, it's just a JSON. Um, and this is the open API specification for this. Now, if we want to do this, but for AI agents using MCP, making our services better, bigger, smarter, faster, 
this would be an endpoint definition for an MCP. Again, we have a name, maps, geocode. We have a description, which is very important for AI agent to understand how to use this endpoint. And we have an input schema that basically says, hey, this is what you, as an AI agent, should provide for this tool to work properly. In this case, we described that this is a JSON object with the properties, and we have one property, its address of type string, and again, description, because LLM need a lot of descriptions to work right. And uh, in this case, having uh, our service defined like this, we can say, OK, now we have a service. It is Google Maps uh, capable, and we will call it MCP server. This is a terminology that Anthropic introduced with the protocol. This is MCP server. Now, when we have a server, we will also have a client, and they will talk. Uh, to make a simple analogy here, if we take HTTP protocol, when you have a server, it's just a regular web server with your endpoints. You can write in a sprint, OK the server for the client. Again, you can just have a curl or OK to a client, for example, that can talk HTTP. Now, for the MCP, it's quite similar, so the analogy works. It would be an MCP server, but with MCP endpoints, they can be done with Kotlin SDK from us, Spring AI. Uh, and for MCP client, again, it's just a client that can talk MCP. So we have this now. They can talk, but I mean, if a client just gets the information, it's quite useful. If you would curl YouTube link, you would get a bunch of nonsense. It's not a video, right? We need somehow to interpret this information, and the same goes for MCP. So to interpret what client can get from an MCP server, we need an MCP host. MCP host knows how to handle this information. In our analogy, for HTTP, host is a browser or mobile application for MCP. It would be Claude, it would be Raycast, it would be just Brains AI Assistant. They all can do this. Now, of course, MCP host can uh, manage multiple clients. They can talk to Google Maps, GitHub, Slack. They can talk to any other MCP-enabled server. There are a lot of them. If you Google them, there are a lot of things that already support MCP. But we will focus on just one to make this analogy work. So one thing, one key thing that is missing is, of course, Big Brain AI. And now our scheme is complete. This is the whole scheme that uses MCP. And let's see how the flow of requests will work in this. So let's just take any chat. Doesn't matter right now. This chat is, by default, we think that is MCP capable. It's capable of all of the things we described. We type a request. We type a simple request. Give me coordinates for the address of our venue where, uh, we, where we are right now. We will send this request to an LLM. An LLM will think like, hey, I don't have this information, but maybe I can get it somehow. So it goes to host. It asks how I can do this. And the host says, OK, let's look at the servers. Let's look at all of the tools that we have. We see that we have a tool that's called Geocode that can return Geocode by using an address. And we submit this information to LLM. LLM thinks, it thinks, 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 and then it says, OK, that's, I guess that's exactly what I need. That was the same thing that user asked, and that is what this tool does. So I can just call this tool. Please execute it, says the LLM, and the host executes the thing. It all transfers from the MCP to the server, and boom, profit. We have our working tool that can do the coordinates, and that's it. So it will probably not be like this. LLM will probably return you something like, hey, here's the latitude, here's the longitude, and please tell me if you want something else, blah, blah, blah. But this thing is, I mean, it's now maybe in, easier to understand when I talk about this, but still, it's quite a complex scheme. The good news for us as a developers, and you probably here are uh, developers, it, we don't need to code all of this. I mean, we don't need to code LLMs, we don't need to code MCP host and their communications. It's already done for us. For example, by Cloud Desktop, also by Raycast, as I showed, also by JetBrains AI system, they all can do this. What we need to do but what we want to do is a simpler task. We want to create MCP servers. And uh, or we can use already existing ones like Google Maps, but we also want to create new ones, for example, for your own applications, for your own services, maybe for something internal in your company. And uh, to that point, I just talked about tools, right? MCP can do tools. Tools are simple, execute, return result. Also, there are prompts, also there are resources, also there are things that are called sampling. This is all covered in the docs. I don't have time for this. But I have time to code a simple MCP server. And that would be for the Kotlin Conf application. Now, we will use 
our SDK. This is an official SDK for MCP. It is endorsed by Anthropic. It is in their uh, repository on the GitHub. We develop it from the JetBrains side. You can see my face there in the contributors. And we will use it right now to make the Kotlin Conf MCP enabled. So let's do some coding. Actually, I lied to you a bit. I will not do coding. I already wrote it, but I will just show you how it works. So this is the repository for the Kotlin Conf application. This is a readme. You can see here the, the instructions, how to run it. I already have here our desktop application running. Uh, you can see the things here, our lectures. I think there's mine here. Yes, that's me. Uh, the talk was really great. Uh, but OK, never mind. What we can see here uh, is the backend model, which is the interesting part for us. And if we go here, we will discover that this is a cater application with a bunch of routings for the users, for the schedule, for the voting, news, and everything, everything. Our thing is scheduled right now. Uh, and it is very simple cater route. If anybody worked with cater here before, they understand what it means here. Basically, what we do is we call this service that is called sessionize, and we retrieve the events from there. And we define an endpoint for this. It's just a regular plain HTTP get endpoint with the name of conference. And we just respond this conference data. Now we want to make AI be able to work with this data, right? We need an MCP endpoint. Here goes our SDK. So what we do is we define an MCP extension. We will also use the same sessionize object as in our HTTP endpoint. But now we also will declare a server, an MCP server, with a bunch of tools. Now I uh, folded this thing. Here, for example, you can see there is a metadata for the server, its name, its version, and uh, the fact that it is able to provide tools. But what is more important are the tools itself. So here, for example, a more simpler tool is list events. Uh, name describes what it does. Description does it even better. We just return a list of all events on the Kotlin conf. And we provide a function that should be called when this MCP endpoint is triggered by an LLM. So basically, we will get this all conference data. I did some data manipulation just to make the outputs uh, smaller, so it is easier to digest by LLM. And I encode it as a JSON, and I just return it back to an LLM. The other tool is a, a bit more interesting. It just will say, hey, return me the full information about this event. So the list of event, it had some truncated information. It didn't have descriptions and everything. But I want the full information, and uh, I have an ID for this event, says LLM. Please supply me with all I need. Now, we just define what we need as a parameter. So it's just an ID of event. And we can get this ID from the request object. And from the same conference data, we can just find the event that is needed. And we can return it to a LLM so it can work. Now, I already have it running right here. And I will call. Claude to demonstrate for me how it works. So here you will see that now I have Kotlin Conf uh, tool here listed with my two tools. OK. And I have a prompt that says, OK, there is a talk about MCP, this one. And uh, which is the next one? Let's ask. OK. It didn't work. It worked every time before this, and it didn't work now. Let's try to restart the server. Oh, it's not the server. Maybe it's, ah, I'm sorry. Let's try our backend server again. Now, this is awkward. Um, I'm sorry. Let's try again. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, use Kotlin Conf app, please. OK, finally. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, it 
yes, you see it called the list event tool, it called get event by ID, it called one more. And now it says the next one is Kotlin game beat. And it starts right after the, this one. And that's it. That's the whole MCP server. Again, we didn't wrote much, right? Two tools. Let me close this. This is one tool. This is the other tool. That's it. And the application was there before MCP. I didn't need to change the whole code base. I didn't need to do any of those things. I just added the one more in point. And now your application is AI enabled. And you can do AI cool stuff with this, right? And I think that's the point of the whole talk. You can use Kotlin SDK. You can spend 10 minutes, 5 minutes, only you can just ask Juni to do it for you. And they will make your application or your service AI enabled. That's it. And uh, I think that's the end of the topic. I skipped a couple of parts uh, for the setup. But if you scan this QR code, there's a link to GitHub that describes all of the steps that I did for the MCP servers, especially for the Kotlin Confab. But they're not a lot. They're very easy. So please enjoy. Please report any bugs for the Kotlin SDK. And thank you. <laughs>